Here I've drawn the soda can with the soda level at some intermediate level between being full and empty. And of course, the level at any given time is x. Zero, x equals 0 is the bottom of the can. x equals 12 centimeters is the top of the can. And if you think a little bit about this problem before we begin, it's very interesting to think uh, when the can is full, it's a symmetrical object. And the center of mass would be right in the center of it, of course, or halfway up at x equals 6. By the way, we're only interested in the, the vertical location of the center of mass. We're looking at this axis. We'll call it the y-axis, even though our variable is called x. We'll let x be the distance up or down the y-axis. And when the can is full, it's symmetrical. And the center of mass, of course, would be right in the center at x equals 6. But if you think about when the can is empty, now it's also symmetrical. And again, the center of mass is at x equals 6. But when the can is in the process of emptying out, it is not symmetrical from top to bottom. And so the center of mass is not in the center. So in other words, the center of mass lowers, but then it has to go back to x equals 6 eventually. So that means at some point, it must be at its lowest location. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, in other words, when you hear lowest point, in other words, the minimum, a little bell should go off inside your head whenever you hear minimum or maximum. That means we're going to look at the function of what's going on and take the derivative of it and set it equal to 0 because at the minimum or the maximum, that's where the slope of the graph is zero, and that's what we're gonna be looking for. We're going to be using our equation uh, for center of mass, and we're going to use it for two, between two points of mass. So we're gonna find the center of mass of the liquid that's in the can. We're gonna use the center of mass of the can itself, and then we'll find the center of mass between those two points of mass. So here is our equation down here for finding the center of mass between two points of mass, M1 and M2. M1 will be located at position X1, and M2 will be located at position X2. The first mass, of course, is the can by itself, and that is always going to be at X equals 6 centimeters, or I guess it should be Y equals 6 centimeters. So right here is 6 centimeters up, from the bottom of the can. That won't change for the can itself. The liquid, of course, is what's changing, but it, it is always going to be the midpoint between the top and the bottom of the liquid. So if the top of the liquid is at location x, the center of mass of the liquid is going to be at x over 2. In the problem, it was given to us that the mass of the can is 140 grams, and the mass of the liquid inside the can is 1.31 kilograms. So that's the mass when the can is full. And if X is the level of the liquid and 12 is when it's full, then X over 12 would be the percentage that the can is full. So of course, I can multiply that percentage times the mass of a full can to come up with the mass of the liquid when it is at position, when the top of the liquid is at position X. Okay, so here I'm going to plug in my total mass is the mass of the can plus the mass of the liquid, which we found this is, is the equation that describes that. And then the mass of the can, uh, just the mass of the can, 0.14, just the location of the center of mass of the can is 6. And then the second term is the mass of the liquid, which is 1.331 times x over 12 times the position of its center of mass, which is x over 2. All right, so I'm going to combine some terms and simplify the equation to get to the second equation here. Then I'm going to multiply this fraction through the parentheses. And now I see that I have two terms that are similar but not the same. So if I can combine them, I need to have common denominators. So I see the common denominator uh, is this right here. So when I combine them, that means this fraction on the left, all I need to do is multiply its numerator by 24. 
to make them have common denominators. And now I have this expression for the location of the center of mass of the can of soda as it is emptying. Now, I want to take the derivative of this because remember, we have an expression, because remember this expression describes where the center of mass for all positions of X, the level of the soda in the can. So if I can find out where the slope of that graph is zero, that will indicate to me the minimum uh, of the center of mass's location. So to simplify me taking the derivative of this expression, I'm just gonna notice that this is a constant, I'll call it A, this coefficient I'll call B, this, when I multiply the 24 through the parentheses, this will be a constant, I'll call that C, and this times this coefficient on the X, we'll call D. And here are the values of A, B, C, and D, but I, it's just easier to take the derivative in this form right here. So when I take these numbers and plug them into the equation, just to show you what it looks like, I wouldn't expect you to do this in the homework problem yourself, but there is the equation with the numbers plugged in, and I'm using Desmos here to draw a graph of this for me. So you can see here's the graph, and when the height of the soda is at 12 centimeters, then the position of the uh, center of mass is at six or halfway. And when the level of the soda is at zero centimeters, when the can is empty, you see as well, the, lo the location of the center of mass is at six centimeters. And as the can empties, the center of mass lowers as the level of liquid lowers. But then of course, in order for it to return back to six, it has to go up again. And so we see it do that. So this is the spot we're looking for right here where the slope of the graph is zero. That is the minimum of the graph. Here we go. We're going to take the derivative. So instead of writing it as a fraction like this, I'm going to write it as a product. And this is to the negative one, which is just like it being in the denominator. And now I can apply the chain rule to take the derivative. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So here we go. You can see here the first and the derivative of this term is gonna be negative one, which accounts for this negative sign here, and then subtract one from the power to give me negative two. And since inside the parentheses I have something as a function of x, I then multiply times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses to give me the first times the derivative of the second plus the second and the derivative of the first term is just 2bx. Now I'm going to, again, just like above, I want to combine these two fractions. So I see they're very similar. It's just that this fraction on the right needs a c plus dx to make them have common denominators. So I multiply its numerator by c plus dx, and now they be, can both be combined with a common denominator. This looks like a big ugly fraction, but when we set it equal to zero, we know that a fraction only equals zero when the numerator of the fraction equals zero. So I don't really even care what's down here in the denominator. I just take the numerator and set it equal to zero. I see that there are two x squared terms, so I combine them and I get an equation that is solvable with the quadratic formula. So b times d is my a, capital A I'll call it for quadratic formula. 2 times cb is my b in the quadratic formula. And negative d times a is my c in the quadratic formula. And I have a calculator that allows me to do the quadratic equation very quickly just by entering the a, b, and c. It's a program that I have. Uh, if you would like me to share that with you, I'm happy to do so. I use it all the time. I find it very useful. And I see that my location of the soda in the can is 2.84 centimeters from the bottom. 